said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelist David Bybee has been called and anointed by God to fulfill the scripture. Now, let's join Evangelist David Bybee in the worship service at the Crossroads Community Church, Carthage, North Carolina. But she gave her heart to Jesus, and when she did, Christ came in, and, and, and the Holy Spirit, while I was praying for this lady, and for those joining by television, I'm sharing about a lady that called from uh, Benson, Arizona this past week. And while I was praying for her, the Holy Spirit in the prayer started covering her sins. The Holy Spirit started revealing and covering and binding and blocking those spirits that she was obsessed with or possessed with. Because when we got through, she said, Preacher, I want to know one thing. Because I had told her that I was the pastor. No, I hadn't. I told her then. She said, You were mentioning things. Everything you mentioned is part of my life. How did you know that? I said, I didn't. But God knows all. And I let her know then that I, I was the pastor. And, but she gave her heart to Jesus. And I want to tell you something. Even though she was a drug addict, that moment she was set free. And I know that beyond any doubt whatsoever. I know because she even made the statement, you know, I can tell there's something different. I can tell there's something different. And for the first time she had hope. And for those of you joining by television, there is hope. You may be bound by drugs and alcohol. Someone in here may be bound by drugs and alcohol. There's lots of children or people, I should say, sitting in churches today, sitting on the pews that are bound by different spirits, bound by the cares of the world. And, and, and God knows. You can hide it from the preacher. You can hide it from the, the congregation, your family, but God knows. And let me tell you something. Except it be repented of and placed under the blood of Jesus, you're not going to make it into heaven with it. And, and, and I'm going to talk for just a few moments, and I'm going to talk about marriage. <clears throat> talk about marriage. Let's talk about marriage for a little while. It's a subject that some of us are familiar with, and others don't seem to be. And, and I told them a few minutes ago, it's, it's controversial, uh, because a lot of people don't want to hear what I'm going to say and, and I'm, not, I'm just going to read some scripture and let, let, let God's word stand for itself over in Matthew 19 we're going to begin reading with verse 4 and I just want to read just a little bit of scripture and then I, I, I want to just talk for a few minutes because the word of God and I've stated this before is absolute and, and in Matthew 19 and verse 4, And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? And, you know, I'm sure Christ is, is saying the same thing today. Have ye not read the word? Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Thank you. I got one amen for those of you who couldn't hear by church or by television. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. He said, in the beginning, he made them male and female. 
And I'm not going to get on the homosexuals or lesbians today. I'm not, going to, I'm not going that route. So y'all can sit back and wipe sweat off your brow. That's not what I'm talking about. But God made them male and female, not male and male. He didn't make them female and female. He said, I made them male and female. Then he gave them a commandment, said, go replenish the earth, replenish. And I'm not going to get into that either. I'm going to talk about marriage. But the, the key thing is, how can you replenish? Could you imagine God putting two men in the Garden of Eden and said, now replenish the earth? Can you imagine how sinful and sick that is? And I'm not going to talk about the homosexuals, but I, I, I want to talk about marriage. But what if he had put two women in the garden and said, now replenish? And we're not going to talk about the lesbians. We want to get back down to marriage. It says that he made, he said, and for this cause shall the man... Leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. The man and the female are going to come together, and they're going to make a baby. And that they're going to become one flesh. That's kind of impossible with two men. And that is pretty much impossible with two women without a man getting involved. But now let's go over to where I want to get. Ephesians. Because I told you I was going to talk about marriage. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, we're going to read, and I'm going to just tell you what the Bible says, and then we're, we'll just let the Holy Spirit have His way. In America today, marriage vows have no value or no moral meaning whatsoever. People don't care that they're making a vow to God. Well, I married him and he was the devil. Well, you should have thought about that before you married him. You shouldn't be marrying the devil. And if you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit told you before you married him that he was the devil. And if you weren't a child of God, then you were unequally yoked to start with, and God didn't put you together. But let's, let's read Ephesians 5.22. Now, I want, I'm going to talk to the women for a few minutes, and I'm going to talk to the men. So women, don't get up and turn the television off yet, and please don't get up and leave the con congregation yet. Just wait till I finish, because the men are going to get pounded on too. But I'm going to pound on the women to start with. It says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, when you married Christ... When you married Christ, and you did marry Christ, if you ask him into your heart, you became the bride. You became the body of Christ. You're married to him. And when you married Christ, you made a vow to him. And it says, wives, submit yourselves. You had to submit to Christ. You came. You remember the day you got saved? You remember how humble you came as a little child? And you just... You didn't care what people thought. It didn't make no difference what they were saying or talking behind your back. You had to get to Jesus and confess that you were a sinner. And you submitted it all to him. Lord, take me. Now, he says, wives, submit to your own husbands, not your neighbor's husband. Submit to your own husband. It says, submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. Submit to him the same way you did to Christ. Be truthful. Be loyal. Be, be, be all that you're supposed to be. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. 